Alrighty, based on the uh, video clip that is that was sent to me by one of the students, TJ, so she sent me the little drone clip. So I'm just going to show you how we can incorporate a bit of motion design elements to that. Um, also, because the shot was done straight out of the, the drone, so we're going to need to stabilize a little bit using warp stabilizer. And uh, this is going to be slightly a bit of a sort of a kind of an intermediate level. How do we um, go through that two stages of striking and things like that? So the end result will be something like that. So this is what I've added in, you know, stabilizer footage, putting my uh, putting whatever tags and name and uh, also like uh, making that looks like sort of like it stands below or beneath the other uh, trees and so on so that's how we're gonna you know i'm gonna demonstrate how we can do that so let's get started so i'm just gonna start a new project completely and obviously just gonna direct that into the project timeline create a new comp straightforward stuff i'm just gonna go for about i think eight seconds will be okay and uh, resolution uh, we'll keep it full but press okay and again, I'm just gonna I'm not gonna care so much about it. The clip itself is about nine seconds long, so well, I'm just gonna just drag it right into that timeline anyway. So it's not gonna be not like a major deal. Uh, for the demonstration, I'm gonna choose the half um, resolution. You don't have to change it. Uh, just that take note that uh, when you do that, it may take uh, a little bit longer for your computer to process. But just again for my demonstration purpose, I'm gonna make it like even a third. That will be okay. It looks okay on my screen. Right, so I'm just going to play that. So there's a shot there, which is pretty okay. I think a tiny bit, maybe you know, want to stabilize it for a tiny bit more. You can do so. I think I can, my computer can handle half, so that's good. So what I would do is I'll go to Tracker. I can see the Tracker right there already. Uh, if you don't have that, you can just go to Window, Tracker, it's somewhere there. All right, so if you don't see that window, just click on that. But we have the Tracker window. So what Tracy or TJ sat was that she's, um, Stabilize the shot using warp stabilizer. So that's fine. Let's do that. Now let's do the warp stabilizer in After Effects here. Although I do find it a bit easier to do that in um, Premiere, but again, if you want to do that in After Effects, it's fine to do so. I'll just show you how to tweak around it. All right. So there we go. As we are speaking, that is uh, doing a bit of um, rendering or like analyzing. So it's going to take about another forty seconds. I'm just going to pause that for you, and I'll, I'll play that once it's ready. Right now the uh, analysis is done, it's stabilized, and I think the shot looks um, definitely smoother and more really, really smooth right there. Okay, so that's good. So that's done with the warp stabilizer, no big deal. Um, now what you want to do is, if you want to use any of these, maybe you may remember one of my lessons, I mentioned that you can't use, um, you can only use one of them at a time on a clip. You can't use another one. For example, if I click track camera, this is what I want to do, but if I click track camera, it's going to give me the error message saying, hey, no, it's not going to work, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can press OK, you can press cancel, either way. Um, what you will have is you're stuck with this blue line then a 3D camera tracker has been put there. What you want to make sure is you, if you apply it like what I did, make sure you click on that, press delete key on the keyboard to delete the 3D um, camera tracker or track camera thing because it's not going to work together. So the work around here is you need to convert this into a composition, right? And then the composition you will be able to apply that track camera on the composition again. So that is like uh, one uh, extra step you need to do. Basically, it's quite simple. You just need to do is like click on that, right click on that track, right? And uh, you see that pre-compose here. So making that will convert that clip into uh, a composition. Let's call it um, drone shot, drone shot, warp, warp stabilize. All right. And what I will also do is I want to make sure that I move all attributes into the new composition. So all the attributes like the warp stabilization and all other things that you might have done, things like scaling, whatever, will be pushed into the new composition, leaving the composition like um, the outside of the shell of the composition is going to be completely blank and empty for you to do whatever thing you want to do. So I'm just going to make sure that I move all attributes in the new composition. Make sure that I, you know, take note that I'm calling this um, com. Um, you know, like um, this is a comp. This is a what's going to stabilize it. Press OK. You might notice it turned into a bit brown. That is also the uh, you know sign saying that is now a composition. So your original file, original track is still there. If you double click on that. You will still see that, you will see, still see warp stabilizer, everything there, but it's inside happening inside this uh, drone shop warp stabilized comp. I don't need to work on that, I'm gonna close that. Now I just wanna go back to the main comp and see if this is the one that I wanna apply the 3D tracker or you know, track camera. 
So I can actually freely do so by clicking on that clip now, the, the decomposition and track camera, and it will start analyzing now, all right? So again, it's probably gonna take a while, depending on the size of your file or the speed of your computer. So I'm just gonna pause it, and I will play that again once I'm ready. All right, now my 3D camera is done. As you can see, the, all the little um, bullseyes and little crosses there. Um, at this point of time, I'm just gonna look for any surface that looks flat. I mean. If it's a drone shot, most of the surface should look fairly flat and simple. So I think I'm just going to look, it's probably not going to be a difficult one to pick uh, anything that looks like a really nice flat circle. So I'm just going to pick this point, um, just going you know, to click on that, right click on this and just going to say create text and camera. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have to change the text to maybe motion design. All right. One funny thing about 3D camera tracker is that when you create that, it tends to create some ridiculous amount of scale. I don't know why. And if you press S and just give you like 27,000 times, that's but that's ridiculous. And maybe go for 100%. Um, Might be too small, but again, my font size is way small, so it's gonna make my font size bigger. So that looks more manageable. And you know, your font uh, like uh, line spacing, etc., makes it more like what it should be like okay all right so just again uh, remember to adjust the scale all right so i'm gonna adjust a tiny bit of it no big deal all right so now i am happy with how it looks and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to rotate that a little bit using the rotate tool so um, you can also you know feel free to move it around i'm just going to rotate a little bit around there to put it in the corner about there maybe touch too much and I'm gonna move it a little bit. Okay, try to move using the gizmo if you are moving elements in 3D space. Um, so I want you to be if you can like move using that red arrow and then green arrow to position it. That looks pretty okay to me. I think that looks big enough, you know, uh, legible, readable, so on. So now if I play the video, it should, you know, track where it's going. And I'm quite happy with how it looks. All right, so that is how our video looks right now. But I will go on to next step to make it look more um, intriguing, more kind of blended into the scene rather than just the text just there because that looks a bit, a bit too forced. I mean, again, I'd be happy if you guys can do something like that, but I can show you what more you can do like, like the example that I've shown you. All right, so the first thing I would do is change the blending, all right? So change the blending right there. You can actually change the mode to something like, you know, soft light should do a job yeah or overlay something like that again it's totally up to your how, how what you want to do uh, i think I'm, i will go stick with soft light and that looks pretty okay and you can also apply effects like you know for example again evaporate one of my one of my favorite effects that i think it looks really nice but feel free to choose anything and uh, just drag and drop right there and press u so that i can see the I think I applied too early. I'm gonna move it a little bit to about five seconds and just drag that. All right, so press U, so I can have two keyframes right there. I can um, move it a bit closer so that they will kind of like evaporate out. I can also select the two keyframes, Command C or Control C on the PC, and move the cursor here and the press Control V or Command V. So that will create the two keyframes. Having said that, it's still doing the outro. So I need to flip the two keyframes. So this one goes later, and this one comes in the first. Right, that means I will have that uh, effects of that evaporate effects coming in, stay there, rotate it, and evaporate out. So that will create that uh, pretty simple, uh, like uh, sort of uh, six, seven seconds of motion design work. Pretty simple. All right, so one step further, what I want to do is, it looks pretty okay, I'm quite happy with that, but if you look at the trees and things like that, I want it to be like sort of go on blend onto the, the ground, right? So what I can do is I can just mask out the little trees and so on. To do that, make sure you select the text layer, right? So maybe also a good idea to lock the others, select the text layer. I'm gonna pick up the pen tool and come on over, I'm just gonna loosely trace the tree. No have to worry, don't have to be super accurate. All right, so now notice that actually my motion design actually goes inside the tree, which is no big deal. Uh, all you need to do is um, you know select this layer, press M for your mask, and basically just choose inverted. So once you choose inverted, uh, you'll notice that now the tree is like, you know, sort of that uh, gives you the impression that the text is now, now under or beneath the tree. You can also apply things like feather if you want to press F 
you get a feather value. You don't have to go very big, but just maybe about a couple, maybe two pixels kind of value will be sufficient for, I think. Um, again, this is completely up to your uh, personal um, like preference. There are also little bushes around there. You can also add more if you want to just again, select the layer, use the pen tool and select those little um, bushes around there. Okay. All right, there, and on this one, what you notice that it doesn't actually affect right now. So what I would need to do is I need to change the add to subtract. Then you'll notice that it's been cut away completely, but you can also change the opacity of the map. So I don't want it to be completely cut out, maybe a little bit less, maybe about um, 55, I don't know. Again, it's completely up to your own personal taste. I notice that it goes like that. Also, I'll add a feather to a little bit so that looks like it's been more uh, out of the way. I can add more uh, mass. You can add as many mass as you want. Um, oops, I made a mistake. So, because I should have clicked on that layer. I forgot to click on the layer. So make sure you always click on the layer every time you want to create a mask. So same thing there. Uh, again, press M for mask. Uh, change that to subtract. So you notice that now the tree is like you know coming up. Again, add a bit of a feather, tiny bit, maybe just about four or five. Create another mask right here. So this one looks a bit like a bigger, taller tree. And again, I'm going to change it to subtract completely. Add a bit of feather one more time. Um, there we go. So again, if you notice that, that kind of like starting to look like, you know, the, the text is sort of embedded onto the ground. Um, you know, you can add more, you can always add more, you can click on that. If you feel there will be more trees on top or bushes on top, you can add more again. Uh, add that, make sure you change the subtract. F, F for feather, give about another four or five pixels. And until you're really happy with how the the text you know, look right now. And there you go. So you get this um, this effect, which is a bit more integrated into the background. I mean, you know, so this is what I would, you know, suggest you guys try that if you have a chance. And uh, this is one of the really cool ways to use tracking data, uh, you know, camera tracker on uh, shots like drone shots, which is very uh, simple and effective kind of use of motion design. It's not too, you know, uh, over the top, not too like distracting but sort of something there that's more subtle and um, then the text is there if you think of too much of the uh, animation you can even delete these uh, evaporate effect if you don't want to uh, you know it will stay there more subtle and so on so again it's uh, feel free to make a lot of adjustments as much as you like and hope you enjoy this tutorial